Okay, hello again. We are now welcoming a full team of developers from Thales. Uh, not the overall development te team, but uh, it takes no more than three people to tell us about the latest Capella developments. So are uh, with us uh, Aurélien Passionio, Mintu Tontat, and Sandro Postaru. Thanks to be with us, guys, and I'll give you the floor. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sandu and I'm a software engineer on the Capella core team. Sorry for not having our webcam uh, on, but we are at our workplace and we are obligated to have masks. So we'll do it like this for the moment. So I am joined today by Mintu, who is a software engineer colleague, and also by uh, Aurelien, who is a Capella coach. And together we'll present you the current Capella development status and the future improvements on the, the product. So let us begin this presentation with a short overview of the development teams. So as you can see here, the core team has five members. We are three software developers, uh, a product owner, and also a scrum master. And we also have different internal Thales teams and external collaborators that are closely involved in the development process. So we follow a classical scrum approach with three week sprints and all of the classical scrum ceremonies, such as daily meetings, refinement meetings, uh, client demos, and so on. So being the core development team, we are responsible for five important tasks. The first one is the product architecture. So we make all of the fundamental uh, structural and design choices. We also ensure the development. So basically, we write, fix, and maintain the source code across different product branches. The continuous integration cycles, so we ensure that the new features are built and tested in a seamless manner. We also ensure the product deployment. So this is basically meaning that we ensure that all of our products are available and ready to use. And finally, the support of our clients. So we provide support for users uh, reaching us on the public forum and on uh, GitHub issues. So now that we have a clear picture of the development process, we can talk about the current Capella roadmap. So as you can see here in this slide, uh, the next patch version, Capella 1.4.2, will be released at the end of October. And the next major version, Capella 5.0, will be released at the end of December. So you might notice that the Capella uh, versioning scheme evolves since we switch from 1.4.2 to 5.0 directly. Uh, more details on this change and the reasons behind it will be presented in the next slide. But for the moment, let us discover uh, all of the new interesting features of Capella 1.4.2. So we'll begin by diving into some statistics about the 1.4 version. So these statistics combine all of the patches from 1.4.0 to 1.4.2. And we can see here that we delivered uh, 176 user stories and two epics. So this translates into over 300,000 line additions some 95,000 line deletions, and overall 13,000 changed files. In the next slide, we'll focus on these epics and user stories. So one of our, one of our exciting new feature is the diagram title blocks. So this new functionality allows you to add uh, dynamic information in your diagrams in regards to the element features and their relationships. So this information is automatically extracted meaning that your title blocks are always synchronized with your model. Next on the list is the new search and replace functionality. This was reimagined and recoded from scratch, and it now allows you to locate elements efficiently with a very fine granularity and also to perform batch modifications to any of their features. And finally, we'll present you some of the quick wins that we were able to deliver in order to ease your modeling process. So in the next slides, we'll present you an in-depth review of these features. So the first one is diagram title blocks. So as I previously mentioned, uh, title blocks are a new type of model elements that can be used to display additional information related to your model. So they are always synchronized with your model. So there is no risk of outdated information in your diagrams. Um, in order to better understand this new feature, uh, we prepared a short demo. So we can see here that we have a PAB diagram and I'm interested here by the streaming server component. My intention is to display some information related to this component. And most notably, I want to display the involving capability realizations and also the provided interfaces. 
you can see here that uh, these two information are available in the semantic browser. And I want to display them in my diagram. So in order to do so, I can now use a new tool called title block that is available here. So I can click on the tool and then click on the component. And I can see that there is a new element that appears. So this element is basically a table. I can add as many lines and as many columns as I wish. So now that the structure of my table is defined, I need to specify how the content of this table is extracted. In my case, the information is available in the semantic browser. So I can use the semantic browser queries to display this information. So you can see here, I selected the title block and in the property view, I can input the content. So here you have a not a complete feature. In my case, the keyword is Capella since the query that I want to display is a Capella query. So I can select this keyword. And also I can see the list of all of the available queries. In my case, the query is the involving capability realization. So I select this query. That right away, this information is displayed in the diagram. So I can do exactly the same thing for the interfaces. The only thing that changes is the name of the query, which in this case is uh, provided interfaces. So semantic browser queries are one way of populating your title blocks, but there are other ways. Uh, the next one is using the features of our elements directly. So for this, I can add a new title block. And for this element, I know that he has a, a feature called description. So I can display this information here. And this time I won't use the, the Capella uh, keyword, but the, the feature keyword. Same as before, we have an auto completion feature. So we can select the description feature. And you can see that the description is now displayed in my diagram. And the third way is to use an AQL query. So here I want to display uh, the number of allocated functions. So for this, I select the AQL uh, keyword followed by the AQL query. And I can see that we have three allocated functions for this uh, component. So all of the title blocks that uh, I showed you are related to a diagram element, but we can also display uh, title blocks that are related to the diagram itself. So this time I will use the same tool, but I will not click on a diagram element, but on the diagram itself. And I can see that there are new title blocks that appear. And for the diagram, the information that I want to display are the contextual elements and the elements of interest. So in order to do so, this is very easy. Same as before, I can use the, the capella keyword followed by the contextual elements. And for the second one, I'll use the elements of interest. And you can see that this information is automatically displayed. And of course, if your model changes in the meantime, this information will be updated automatically. The last feature that I want to show you is the fact that you can automatically add title blocks to newly created diagrams. In order to do so, you need to go to the window preferences menu and then to Capella diagram title blocks. And you can see that there is a new checkbox that is available called add by default diagram title blocks. In this panel, you can define the structure of your title block. And after you enable this feature, you can see that when you will create a new diagram, it will automatically contain the defined title block. So let's do this here. We create a new PAB and we can see that it automatically contain the, the title block. So I think this is all for this new feature. I will leave the floor to Mintu, who will show you the, the next interesting features of Capella 1.4.2. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mintu. Um, so I continue the presentation by showing you this brand new feature we have added in uh, Capella 1.4, which allows you to um, search for information in your model really quickly and efficiently. So let's switch to the demonstration that I have prepared to show you this uh, feature. So to access to the search dialog, users can either uh, click on the uh, search menu or click or, or using the shortcut control page. So this is the design of the uh, search uh, dialog. On the top of the dialog, you have the uh, text box to uh, typing the, the text to search for. 
you have uh, access to different search mode. Uh, in the middle of the dialog, you have uh, the place to uh, to select the um, search criteria, and on on the bottom of the dialog, you have uh, different selections for search scope. So uh, let's begin with the search criteria area. So here you have um, different types of um, Capella meta classes that have uh, been uh, populated. So this feature is really model centric because this is based on model concepts such as uh, meta classes and attributes. So um, when you uh, select different elements on the left hand side of uh, the dialog, uh, all of the attributes uh, that are combined uh, and uh, updated accordingly. For example, here uh, by default, all the elements are selected. And here are all possible attributes that you can select. Um, to save users time, we have added two filters to uh, exclude all of the abstract elements and all of the technical elements. So uh, all that leaves here are, you know, uh, capilla meta classes that uh, have really meaning. So uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna try to search for the text my function in all of my functions. So once all information are selected and uh, you click on the search button, you are brought to this new uh, search view where the uh, search results are displayed. So as you can see over here, I have um, all of uh, my elements which have the text my function in it, either in uh, the name attribute or in the summary attribute. So let's switch, switch back to the uh, dialogue. Mm, this feature is very uh, configurable. On the left panel, you can choose which meta class you want to search for. And on the right, you can choose which attribute. So I try to limit my search by uh, searching only on system function instead of uh, searching for you know, all of uh, the elements in Capilla. And I leave the um, attributes as is. I want to relaunch my search. So as you can see in the search view right now, I have only my system function instead of all of uh, the elements that have the my function text in it. So one thing to notice here is that by default, the, the dialog has extracted and populated the list with all the capital meta classes that are available, but the dialog also show cap so meta classes that uh, are coming from your viewpoints uh, and also from your diagrams and and concepts coming from diagrams such as notes. So I'm gonna try to uh, check diagram and notes here and, to, and uh, see what happens. So not only I have uh, results coming from the name attribute and the summary attribute of my system functions, but also information coming from uh, diagrams and notes are also displayed in my search view. So let's check it out that uh, this diagram really contains a note with the text my function in it. In terms of search modes, users are provided with uh, three different modes. So as you can see here, we have case entity in which capitals and lowercase letters are treated differently. Regular expressions are also supported. And uh, lastly, we have the whole world option. So I try to change my text to a regular expression and uh, can see that uh, I have the same results as before. So finally, in the um, the bottom of the dialog, you have uh, three different scope uh, that are supported, which is the workspace, uh, in which all of the projects in the workspace are taken into account during the search. The second mode is uh, selected model elements. You know, the current selections are elements are taken into account in all of their children also. And the last one is the enclosing projects. You know, the projects that uh, contains the selected elements. So let's try with the first option. 
if I reapply the same search, uh, I'm going to see the results uh, coming not only from my current selection, uh, but also from other projects uh, in my workspace, just uh, my project. So let's talk a little bit about this search view. This view is quite useful because you have uh, the option to see the history of the search, but uh, also you can reapply the search. You know, if you have updated your model and you want to see uh, new results in your search uh, view, you can reapply the search. Uh, this feature is really well integrated into Capella because you can navigate uh, from the search view into different views of Capella, such as uh, the Project Explorer or the Semantic Browser. So I think that's it for the demonstration. Let's switch back to the uh, presentation. So during the development of Capella, the team always try its best to improve the product with small features, what we call quick wins. So these are features that took us really small effort to finish, but they show that the product is always in frequent progress. So for this version of Capella, here are some interesting quick wins that we have implemented. So on the left side of uh, the slide, you had the first feature which is the ability to display jump links in diagrams in form of tunnel. So these jump links are used to show that lines cross each other but do not connect. So um, hopefully it's gonna bring more clarity and style to your diagrams. The second feature is the possibility to select element in diagram with the showing diagram editor contextual menu. Uh, it's quite useful in big diagrams when you want to locate quickly certain element. Uh, not only is it going to select your element, but if your element is hidden uh, elsewhere in your diagram, it's going to review the element and select it. So it's quite practical to use. The third one is the possibility to, you know, on the right side of the slide, you have the, the third feature, which is the possibility to quickly add hyperlinks in the description view. So some of you may have known the process, actually the process of adding hyperlinks into description view is quite cumbersome. You have to go through the process of different dialogues to select uh, which elements coming from your models to insert into your description. So we have um, uh, facilitated this process by adding this um, contextual menu, copy as description link, and then uh, the shortcut to uh, add the hyperlinks quickly into your description view. And um, we have also improved the uh, command line applications to homogenize parameters for different uh, applications. So nowadays you can use the same parameters everywhere in different type of applications. We have also implemented some uh, improvements in, um, in uh, the Capella collaborative mode, but uh, unfortunately it's just out of the scope of the presentation. So I invite you to um, consult the release notes of Capella for the uh, 1.4 to see these modifications. So let's switch to Capella 5.0 that will be released in uh, December 2020 to see uh, uh, what we bring to this new version. Uh, the first modification that's going to notice right away is the, the, the uh, change on uh, Capella version. Um, the team has decided to simplify the Capella version schemes. Uh, why did we do that? Because previously the change of Capilla version is is not quite understandable. You know, major versions, major release were versions like patch release, even though they are API breaks. Uh, patch release were versions like micro release, even though we uh, done some uh, fixes for blocking issues in this version. So we decided for the next version we're gonna homogenize all of these things. So major release and patch release will be version accordingly. For example, if you see that the uh, Capilla version change changes from 5.0 to 6.0, it means that we we did some uh, we did some uh, big modifications. For example, we changed Eclipse platform, something like that, and APIs uh, could be broken. Uh, in patch release, for example, 5.1, we're gonna deliver some uh, blocking issues fixes, and uh, we can also de deliver micro versions, but just for small fixes. So 
everything will be uh, more understandable for not only users but also developers. Uh, here is, is the recap of um, some features that will be delivered in this uh, Capilla version. In terms of performance, we have upgraded Capilla to the to be aligned with uh, Eclipse June 2020. We'll improve the performance of the refresh operations in scenario diagrams. In terms of uh, deployment, we have embedded GDK 14 in uh, Capilla. So Capilla will be a standalone product when you you can install on whichever version of uh, uh, your environment, independent on uh, on whatever version of Java you have on your environment. So it's going to be uh, deployed seamlessly. In terms of uh, usability, UI team has been changed thanks to the new Eclipse version. But we also took the opportunity to change icons uh, to be coherent with this new team. Um, we have change the legacy file extensions from dot melody modeler to a dot capilla, uh, well, to be coherent with the product name. And uh, the migration is also support, so you can continue to work with your, your legacy models without any problem. For the open source community, capilla has been migrated into GitHub. Before, we were host in the Eclipse, and hopefully the migration into GitHub is going to bring more visibility to the product. And uh, hopefully, you're going to receive more contribution from the open source community. Uh, we also took the opportunity to add a contribution guide uh, to show you how to contribute uh, efficiently in uh, the open source capital. Uh I'm going to pass it over to Aurelia to continue the presentation with uh, some ongoing and future work in uh, Capella. OK, so thank you, Mintu um, and Sandu. So I will share my screen directly okay so um Already, yes we are just uh, seeing your screen but on the slides yes good so now i'm going to give you a few words about uh, some ongoing and future work around capella so regarding the first topic uh we it starts from uh, the feedback the need uh, that was defined by some of our users uh, and so basically that uh, when working on the scenario, it's not always easy to uh, modify the scenario based on the graphical representation. Uh, for example, if you want uh, to copy paste a part of the sequence of the scenario or move part of this sequence uh, to another place in the same scenario or in, a, in another scenario. So the solution that we have defined with those users and based also on their experience is to have a textual editor to define the scenarios. So based on the specific grammar and syntax in order to uh, get the same information, to provide the same information about what is the scenario, what are the elements which are involved in the scenario and what is the sequence with the messages exchanged between uh, the elements. Of course, this textual editor can allow to easily uh, copy paste part of the scenario uh, to move into another scenario or thing like this but it's maybe not uh, really good to uh, have another view of the scenario. So the idea is to have both representation, uh, the diagram and the textual editor synchronized together so that you can use the graphical representation and uh, the transcription of the scenario will be updated accordingly. Or if you want, you can modify directly uh, the text description of the scenario and the graphical representation will be updated. So this is going to be a new functionality for Capella. So in the first steps, uh, we will start with scenarios. But we can imagine to extend uh, these principles uh, later in the future to define other kind of elements inside of Capella. And so regarding this functionality, uh, we will first deliver it as a prototype add-on, uh, so quite soon. Uh, but it will not be completely uh, finished. So as I said, in the first step, we will only support scenarios. And maybe not everything in the scenario will be supported. Uh, but we will have this first version in order to share it with the community and get some feedback on the use. And maybe try also to find uh, interested people to collaborate on this development. And so regarding this idea of sharing also ongoing work, ongoing developments around Capella. So we are launching, as of today, uh, what we call the Labs for Capella. And so the labs for Capella, the idea behind it is that anyone from the Capella community 
So either that you are a tool provider, so working on developing some add-ons, viewpoints, uh, tooling around Capella, or an industrial uh, using Capella to engineer your project, or an academic doing some research, defining some uh, new methods and working with Capella or single users, you are going to be able to find and try, but also to share your own prototype add-ons tooling around Capella so that uh, all together in the community, we will try to create synergies and collaborate about uh, developing no new functionalities for around Capella. We know that a lot of users uh, have some additional needs uh, for functionality uh, in Capella. And so maybe you have already started working on this, developing some uh, new features and things like this. And we want to collaborate all together in the Capella community to develop those new functionalities. So regarding the labs for Capella, so you can have a look at, uh, at it. So we already have a website presenting uh, the labs for Capella. And so on this labs for Capella, we have already uh, two projects which are shared. So the first one is a Capella uh, connector with the Open MBEE. So Open MBEE is the Open Model-Based Engineering Environment. So the idea to build an environment for the engineers integrating several tools together. The second project is uh, a tooling for Capella and only for Capella. It's called the Advanced Class Diagram. And so it will enhance uh, the, the class diagram that you can know from uh, Capella with new functionalities with computed information. So you can have a look uh, right now today uh, with the link with the labs for Capella and have a look at those two projects and try it uh, if you are interested uh, by those projects. So as of today, we have only two projects shared on the Labs for Capella, but we have uh, some additional uh, ongoing topics on which we are working and which are good candidates for the Labs for Capella. So the first topic is uh, the, what we call the viewpoint modern states. So we had already uh, presented this uh, work uh, around Capella. So there, there was a dedicated webinar uh, previously. So you can find the link here. And so regarding this add-on, so we are working on uh, improving this add-on. This add-on is still a prototype, so that's uh, why it's it's a good idea to share it on the Labs for Capella. And currently, we are working on improving some ways uh, to work inside of this add-on, so the, the way to define configuration and uh, the situation. And actually, the work that we are doing on this add-on is currently a collaboration with an industrial which is using Capella, which is using this add-on uh, based on the previous presentation that we made for this add-on. And so we are developing new features based on their need, based also on our definition of what should be the add-on, and we are collaborating on this. So this is basically one example of one ongoing work on defining new uh, functionalities for Capella. We have presented this as it were only prototype, but still some people were really interested start to using it and now we can collaborate on developing further this add-on so this one is going to be uh, shared also on the labs for capella and we have some additional ongoing topics on which we are working uh, so here to give you some ideas uh, so one of the topic on which we are working is a bridge uh, from capella to enterprise architect in order to support uh, the continuity between the system architecture and the software design, as we know that some people use Enterprise Architect to really do the software design and generate some code and things like this. So we want to uh, reach a continuity, of course, between the system architecture and the software design. So we are working on some bridge between Capella and Enterprise Architect. And the other topic is also a bridge between Capella and Simulink, because we know that uh, simulation is uh, one really important topic for all engineers to early uh, verify the architectural design or to have also a continuity with the uh, detailed implementation inside of Simulink. So we are working uh, currently on a bridge uh, between Capella and Simulink. So for those two topics, uh, we are currently working on it. Uh, we will share some of our work on the labs for Capella. It will not be completely finalized, but we will try to uh, build the basis of this kind of integration and support some use cases. And then we will try to also collaborate with all the people of the community 
to continue with this work and consolidate it. So to conclude with this part, uh, so the Labs for Capella, so again, you have the link here. Uh, so stay tuned because we are going to share more projects on the Labs for Capella. And also, of course, come and have a look. You can try the first project already shared, but also you can share your own project. So if you have some interesting development around Capella and you want to share with the community in order to also be able to collaborate with other users, then uh, you can find a link in the, the Labs for Capella website. You have a link, share your project, and we will get in contact in order to, to share your project on this platform, the Lab for Capella. Thank you. So I don't know if there is any question. OK, I told you to mute me. So yes, time for questions. Uh, well, we have five minutes for, for questions, which could be short considering the interest you raised. Um, but let's try to do our best. Uh, first question, is it possible to display property values in title blocks? Yes, so I can answer this. This is Sandu. Yeah, of course, it's possible to display property values. Uh, you can display all of the information that is available in the semantic browser. So as you may already know, property values are available in the semantic browser, so you can display them in title blocks. Even better, even if um, the information you want to display is not uh, present in the semantic browser, uh, you can use either the feature or SQL queries to extract it. So okay, yeah, thanks. title blocks are really customizable. You can display, as long as the information is in your model, you can display it in a title block. Thank you. Next question is about uh, um, the the next release of SizeML, SizeML V2. And people are wondering uh, what will be the, uh, the evolution of this language and if uh, Capella is tracking the change. Um, yes, so on this topic, so we are uh, following what is going on uh, regarding SizeML V2. Uh, we will try to, uh, let's say, um, be somehow compatible or related to SysML v2. Uh, for now, I don't think that we have defined everything that we uh, would like to do uh, regarding this uh, definition of SysML v2, but we will keep this in mind uh, for the future of Thanks. Uh, Thanks. In labs for Capella, should we put the sources or can we put only the executable? Um, we should be able to do both. We can uh, share the source code, of course, uh, if we want to collaborate, if we want to share uh, the code and be able to collaborate with other people. Uh, but in a first step, if you don't want to share the code and just share uh, what you have developed, uh, I think it will be available, it will be possible, yes. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, is there ongoing development to couple Simulink and Capella? Yes, so this is uh, what I presented. Yes, so we are working on this topic. Uh, and so again, what I said is that we are trying to build uh, the, the foundations for this uh, bridge between Capella and Simulink. Uh, we are going in this first version to cover some use cases. Of course, we will not have the time to uh, cover everything. And so that's why we want also to share it with the community to get the feedback from users and things like this and try to be able to collaborate on the development of this kind of bridge. Thanks. Um, a question maybe which is more for Siemens, but I will try my, my luck. Uh, or uh, oh, I lost the question. Oh, are title blocks handled in the Siemens Team Center platform? <laughs> Maybe you don't have the answer. Yeah. Uh, uh, Aurelien? I, I don't know if there is really an impact uh, with the uh, integration with the Siemens uh, Team Center platform to, to be checked uh, with the people from Siemens, but uh, basically, it provides new uh, capabilities for visualization in Capella. And as the uh, integration in, in Siemens is based on the, uh, the Capella version, 
I guess that you will have all these new features available also. Okay, thanks. And um, well, maybe a, a last question, uh, or maybe a remark. Some people ask for the link to the labs for Capella, and and my question, which is not the uh, one of the main question, but I think it's important. Uh, what are the, the skills required to contribute uh, to Capella to to extend Capella? Well, it's, it's me to a developer or member of a Capella team here. So I think uh, one of the most important skills is Java, for sure, because uh, you know all of the stacks of Capella are based on Java. So mostly if you master Java, you'll be able to contribute to Capella uh, already. But um, on top of that, you need to have some basic knowledge about EMF, you know, Eclipse uh, modeling framework. Uh, also, other stacks of uh, Capella such as Sirius, which allows you to, uh, you know, uh, uh, modelize things in terms of diagrams, and uh, also Kitenfar, you know, the, the stack that uh, that allows us to uh, contribute different viewpoints in Capella. So basically, I, I say that Java, which is the most important thing, and then uh, EMF, and then Eclipse, and uh, you know, other stacks of uh, Capella. Thanks for that. So, as uh, uh, suppose, we don't have enough time for for the questions. So, uh, sorry, can I just the last thing, uh, very very quick, regarding the the last question? Uh, do not hesitate to contact us on GitHub because we are uh, all very nice. So, if you want to contribute to to Capella, we will give you all of the the guides and the necessary things that will help you. So, don't hesitate to to contact us on on GitHub.